Hey everyone, it's the Vegan Preppers and get ready for a couple chat. Vegan Prepper. Vegan Prepper. Alright, here we are. It's been a really long time. So, yeah. It has been. Finally, I managed to get him with me in front of a camera when we were able to actually sit and do it. So, I'm very happy about that. But, yeah, so I'm just like start right away. What would you like to, to talk about? Um, kind of stuff been, a lot of stuff has been going on. So, it hasn't only been like, I don't know, because you like doing this, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so it's just been kind of crazy. Like just this last week you had to replace the water heater. Yeah. Um, that is like, there's like a big box. That's a lot of what this mess behind us right now is because basically you had to deconstruct the laundry room to get the water heater out and we lost a ton of our storage <laughs> that was like built in there. And so now, um, I mean, thank God we've already kind of, we've already decluttered a lot out there yes thank god but like still been bad there is there's quite a lot still um yeah our yeah. water heater had uh pegboard built around it with insulation uh -huh. um which seemed like a good idea at the time i think um but built into that was a lot of our shelves in our laundry room so yeah and then the pegboard like i, I hang up um the excess rings for the canning lids the mop like mops and dusters and various other things and so yeah the new water heater is bigger so the pegboard won't go around it yeah and i also am not a huge fan of the fact that i didn't know that the water heater was leaking earlier because it was surrounded by a wall essentially and fiberglass yes so much fiberglass yeah so, <laughs> so which absorbed a lot of water i mean the fibers themselves didn't absorb water because fiberglass doesn't absorb but it was trapped in all of those fibers <laughs> so that was that was not a very fun night um that was actually what was kind of i, I want to say tragic but it's not truly tragic you you know what i'm saying was we had decided we were gonna go to bed early that night yeah i was sick nine o'clock and i was exhausted i can't remember I honestly can't remember what was going on. Oh, I think it's because you kind of had been sick. So I hadn't gotten good sleep yep. in forever. Anyway, we were going to go to bed early that night. Yep. Um, and so, oh, it was my back. My back was hurt. I hurt my back um, from the Azure Hall. Doing all that by myself um, at a bad time. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. And so I was exhausted. I had washed the sheets on the bed. And so I had not gotten that put back together. Um, just with the back, but you know, I was getting everything taken care of and so Adam went out to grab the bedding To put on our bed and he discovered the puddle in the laundry room and then you were up until like two Yep <laughs> Fixing that <laughs> and we had no water and That was an interesting interesting day. Yeah. Yeah, you had to pull the washer and dryer out and dismantle that pegboard structure and pull all the insulation out and that was just to get the job or just to get the water to stop coming out right and then the repair was done the next day right and so we um yeah I, I stayed up with you I did crash for us for a little portion of it but I did stay up because I knew that if he needed help and he came in and found me asleep he would not wake me up to help him so I stayed up um but you didn't end up meeting me that night it was just the next day you had me help with like one stupid thing but like well i mean seeing all of this it's like i could have helped you move stuff your back was hurt oh that's right you could do anything <laughs> i'm useless <laughs> completely useless well i would have helped i could have you know i could have pounded down a few advil and <laughs> just gone to it <laughs> but yeah is it <laughs> It's like not like the most fun time, but you know, we got through it, but that it was really interesting. It got you thinking about stuff that would be interesting to talk about. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I know how to do a lot of things. Um, and when I don't, I 
know how to make it up as I go along. Um, I am pretty skilled in looking at a thing and figuring out how it works and figuring out how to repair it or um, work on it in some way. Um, I didn't know anything about replacing a water heater. I just I went into a blind. I Honestly, I had never even seen our water heater. Uh, I mean, I've seen a water heater, but I've never seen our water heater because it's been encased in this little miniature room since we moved in. Um, water heaters don't normally last that long. Um, the warranty on the new one is six years. Um, so they basically say, this thing's good for six years. <laughs> and if you're lucky, it will go longer than that, but um, don't count on it. Uh, the water heater that I took out was 29 years old. <laughs> um, so they don't, just, they, don't, they don't make things like they used to. No, they uh, don't make them like that so anymore, for sure. It's pretty legit water heater. Um, but yeah, I, I didn't know anything about it. I didn't know how the water went into it, how the water came out of it. It's not something I've ever thought about. Um, interestingly enough, though, um, I feel like the internet knew that my water heater was getting ready to break because it was advertising to me water heaters a lot over the last like two or three weeks like it's a conspiracy it's or super something weird. yeah because you weren't we haven't been talking like it's not you nope. don't like sit around talking about our water heater nope i but i mentioned to her like i've been seeing a lot of water heater <laughs> advertisements um yeah then it's like somebody poked a hole in it you know it's yeah. inside and poked a hole in our water heater but um see i didn't know anything about any part of it yeah. um so uh, I got to rely on the internet to teach me about how water heater works. So part of the time I was draining the water heater, um, and that didn't go well either because uh, it was all clogged up. So the drain wasn't working. So it was taking, it took hours to drain it. Um, it was also filling itself back up. Uh, I turned the water off. I turned the feed line. I, I learned that there's a feed line to the water heater. And I turned that off and the water stopped coming out of that. But apparently we have another bad valve somewhere in the house. So cold water is feeding backwards into the hot water circuit. And it was refilling the water heater while I was draining it. Um, so five hours of draining, it just kept filling itself back up. I'm like, There's, this has got to run out of water eventually. Um, it did eventually once I turned the entire house off. Um, but during that time, I was watching videos on YouTube and reading articles about how a water heater works, how the plumbing goes to it, um, what I need to know to repair it, or replace it. Um, and I felt pretty inadequate in my knowledge. Um, you don't know everything? I don't know everything. <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, so... Thankfully, we had the internet, but I might not always have the internet. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it got me thinking that maybe I should learn some more, um, find out how to do some more things. Uh, wiring is one that I've dabbled at. Um, automotive wiring, I'm good. Household wiring, I it still seems like magic to me. Um, AC current is weird and I don't understand how it does the things it does or why um, so without electricity it would be hard for me to learn about how to fix our electricity should I need to do that um, yeah we don't always have the money to call someone to do it for us um, so I almost I almost <laughs> always sorry. I don't know if we've ever called anybody I was saying, like, do we do we ever <laughs> This um, is why you are so wonderful. Like, you just, you fix everything. It's we, amazing. We have people work on our air conditioner. That's, That's I have, true. I don't have the tools or the knowledge for that. You did, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I pretty much always fix everything. Um, so, yeah, I, I feel like I should learn how to do, like, let's go full handyman. Learn how to do everything. Um. I don't know how to solder. Uh, I don't know how to solder on plumbing. <laughs> um, I should learn how to do it. I've not known how to. Do, I've known that I've not known how to do it for a lot of years. 
I just haven't learned it yet. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know how to solder on plumbing, but I can solder silver. <laughs> so yeah. I've done that. Mm -hmm. So I've thought soldered electrical circuits and all that, but okay, it is different. Yeah. Uh, and also uh, maybe finding some books so yeah. that should we be uh, without internet, without electricity, um, I can have a reference yeah. for how to do some more stuff. Yeah. So. It was interesting being without water for even, mm -hmm. well, I guess it was, it was overnight and then like the first half of the following day. Um, so that was definitely interesting, um, even though it was only half a day, um, kind of experiencing that, the toilet situation. I, I don't, it, it just reinforces what I have always said in my personal conviction. I will never store water to flush a toilet. That's, that's not what I'm about. Not here, not in central Arizona where we live. Um, that we have to get our composting toilet system figured out yep. to the point that we can utilize it. Even just half a day, like I feel like it would have been better. Yeah, probably. And then we could have we could have currently had our experiment our experimental compost pile outside going with yeah. the with the human manure. It's it's a it's a thing people do like in tiny houses and RVs. If anybody out out there was just like like it is it's an established thing that people do so we have our giant pile of wood chips we have you know like i, I feel almost like we should have just done it we should have just done it and this started is something it. you have to do right to be safe so right exactly we should have had it together and not have it be like a a thing like oh we can kind of figure it out <laughs> and i feel like i'm exposing myself right now like is like so un unprepared but I, I don't know. You it's... know, uh, emergencies did do a really good job of showing you what your weaknesses are. Right. So. Because you think, oh, I've got all the stuff, but like, but like you said, like, it. do do we have the exact knowledge laid out for us in like a reference that's not on the internet for how to set up a composting toilet? I kind of have the gist of it, um, but yeah, we're basically it does have to sit for at least a year or two. I believe it's two years actually before you can use it in your garden um, and stuff like that. So anyway, interesting, interesting stuff. But yeah, never, never going to store because yeah, all the water. It was interesting even just washing hands with water out of a jug and realizing yeah. that using a little measuring cup was a lot easier to pour a small stream of water for washing hands. Um, Sage was not having it. <laughs> <laughs> she is not she's not used to that kind of life at all we've got to take her camping we have to take her camping at some point um so yeah it was just kind of funny she's like it's the water's broken and she was like seriously like offended by it she's our five-year-old um she just turned five actually so um yeah that was really interesting um but yeah just interesting experience always a learning experience yeah, I, I saved as much water out of the old water heater that I had containers for. Yeah. Um, which was only, uh, as far as empty containers, and we have we have water storage. Um, but again, we don't want to use our emergency water storage for flushing the toilet. Um, so I, I saved as much as I could, mm -hmm. but it was like, to bucket flush the toilet, it took like two gallons. Um, yeah, I... So, uh, yeah, and I only had maybe seven or eight gallons. <laughs> or we need uh, like, if we ever do replace the toilets, it needs to be the eco ones that only flush with like a gallon or whatever, you know? Yeah. Or something. I don't know, but yeah, I don't, I don't really want to live here anymore. <laughs> is that like, is that too real? <laughs> like, I just don't, but of course I don't know where I'm supposed to go. Like, where do we go? Like, Ohio? Like, <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, I mean, there's always a disaster on the horizon, possibly. I mean, that's, not to, not to be like, 
pessimistic, but I mean, that's, that's why we live the way we live because you never know what's going to happen. I know. I feel so bad for those people. Like, so yeah, now we're talking about the train derailment. If you guys haven't heard about the Ohio tra train derailment, that's like, yeah, it's like this little rural community, you know, you try to get out of the city, you try to do what you're supposed to do. And then some train dumps a bunch of chemicals right in your backyard and you have to evacuate because it's no longer safe to live where you are. And yeah, what do you do with stuff like that? I don't even, but I guess there's nothing's guaranteed. Nope. But I guess even just statistically speaking or not statistically, what am I thinking of? Chances. What is the, what is the word I'm looking for? Like the, the chance of something bad happening somewhere else is, I, I think, becoming... Probability? Probability. There you go. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, like probabilities as far as staying here with huge influx of people. Like, where are you all coming from and why? <laughs> like, I guess it's because of winter. Like, because of basically right now, like, people are moving here because we have a decent, like, like a nice winter but it's like yeah i mean we have we have snowbird season but we also have a huge amount of people moving in from california and well other states as well but it, there's just like a massive influx of people like yeah huge population increase you know and i've lived here for about 30 years now and i found out recently so we moved here originally my grandmother and i moved here in the 90s so I found out, like early 90s, I found out that that was like the first population boom. So it was us coming in on the first time, probably all the locals like, why? <laughs> but now it's it's becoming... I... There's a lot of industry here. Arizona has really good um, tax benefits for, for businesses. So I guess so. A lot of big companies are putting stuff here. Amazon's got huge facilities here. They got this new uh, semiconductor plant going in that is massive. Uh, I mean, it's really big for the economy and it's really good for America that we're getting uh, some of this manufacturing of electronics uh, here in the States. Right. Um, because sourcing yeah. all of our componentry from other countries is not, um, not the best way of doing things. Well, not sustainable. And yeah, we're, we're reliant on people who we aren't always on the friendliest of terms with, um, or may not always be on the friendliest of terms with. And we, I mean, with the way our society functions, we cannot function without those components. Right. So, so I mean, I guess there are reasons and stuff. I just, it's, it's, un, it's getting unlivable. Even if you're not looking at the potential water crisis, the potential energy crisis, of this many people here in such an unsustainable environment because also of course the way that people do it right power washing their driveways like i um i try really hard not to judge but it and i'm not like judging i think people just don't genuinely don't even think because they turn on water and it just comes out it doesn't even occur to them and it never stops right it doesn't it doesn't even occur to them that this is a finite resource it's precious we should treat it like it's precious here yeah so yeah anyway it just stresses me out the whole like the longer i live here the more stressed i get about it i try really hard not to be high stress on this channel like i try really hard to not do that because i know that i do like i get that way like i get like ah! and so i don't want to be that for anybody else i like to try to prep from a practical it's just what makes sense kind of standpoint but i gotta say yeah every single time we're about to go into another summer my anxiety ratchets up 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 because to me like everybody's talking about you know energy crisis gas crisis whatever and they're worried about heating their homes during winter yeah. i worry about all of those things but cooling my home during summer and so the potential every single time we're about to enter another summer i I worry that's because that's when, and I shouldn't worry, but I do. And that is when it would be the absolute worst for us to lose access to our water and lose access to electricity for cooling. 
I mean, it would be, it would be a disaster. Like, like nobody, I don't know if anybody could conceive of a disaster like that. People talk about when you lose food, people would go crazy losing food. I don't know if we've ever seen one where people lost water. Yeah, not for a significant period of time. So I, I mean, we would be technically okay because like we prepare for these things, but anyway, we just got rain barrels. <laughs> why, why are you laughing? That stupid rain catch I came up with. I, we got the rain barrels and then we learned that two days later it's going to rain. So I'm like, oh, I'm going to capture some of this water. I don't have the system set up. It's not ready to go. So I did this PVC mess um, hooked to a gutter and it just kept falling over and it was poorly done. Um, but I, it was like 10 minutes of work. So I was just trying to like just do something. Um, yeah, because that's, that's kind of how our storms happen here. Yeah. I don't know if other people it's like, oh, we're going to get rain. And then it's like, oh, go, 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 go. <laughs> Yeah. So uh, I, don't, I haven't gone out to see if I successfully captured any water over the storm last night, but yeah, um, yeah. I mean, if I did, then the rain barrels are in an inconvenient place, anyways. But <laughs> in the middle of the well, yard. <laughs> yeah, so we are gonna start setting that up. So we have our our. And I know you're not supposed to talk about your preps, but people ask questions, right? Like. <sighs> I'm like, does anybody that we know even watch this? I don't know that they do. I don't think they do. I actually always feel a little weird when people say, oh, I watch your videos. And I'm always like, oh, bye. <laughs> I'm just Awkward. like, I'm just like, okay, I'm just going to look over here. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, it's like really weird to me to like meet people that watch my videos. It's like, anyway, but no, we have our, our separate so far. We have some, uh, like a, some barrels set up that are, you know, our emergency water supply, but I definitely also want to have the ones that are catching rainwater um, for whatever gardening, but then also potential um, emergency water supply, even, you know, to boil it, filter it, boil it um, for, you know, use in, in whatever emergency situation, even though it's technically non potable, but, you know, if you filter it's, it and you it, boil it, then. If the choice is non-potable water or death from dehydration then well yeah so yeah that's that's why make it make it drinkable this is why i always stress like you know you prioritize your preps you need to you need your water i always talk about that like i don't think anybody talks about it nearly as much as i do but of course i live here um water is so essential people always talk about getting their food set like they've got their shelves of food and i always want to know where is your water storage what did you do for your water do you have water like some people have wells, but I don't know that that's even necessarily something that you can rely upon. Um, Man, who was I talking to? I was talking to somebody this week um, that had a had their well dry up. Um, yeah, because they had to. I can't remember who I was talking to. Weird. Um, and they had to. They basically had no water because you, you know you don't have city water. Um, if you're well goes dry or right. clogs up or something then you don't have water well that's when the the level of the reservoir dips down you know then there goes your well that that's also if your well is here and the water level in the ground is here and then it goes here you have no more water so yep. yeah it's it's a serious issue so anyway so yeah water. even if you have a well having storage is a good idea water 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 <laughs> water <laughs> so anyway but yeah it's just so yeah I'm, I'm so sad about that ohio train thing like that every time i think about it, it makes me so sad it makes me sad too the the earthquakes in turkey you know it's like we were we were talking a little bit about that kind of both of these things have also made us look and you know all the things looming on the horizon there's always something looming on the horizon especially if you watch a lot of prepping youtube channels boy is there ever looming happening <laughs> all of the time everything is looming it's like anyway so like i said i try really hard to keep this a safe space 
But, you know, I'm not unaware that things are going on. I'm not unaware that things are happening. I'm very aware, but like I try to keep this a safe place and we try to talk to it, talk about it from a more practical standpoint. Um, but yeah, bo both of those situations, because I, I remember relatively recently and I can't remember, I can't remember what precipitated it, but at some point it feels like every single big name prepping channel was talking about how like preppers are too obsessed with bug out and that really bugging in is almost always the best option um which is probably still true <laughs> but it's just kind of funny not funny haha but funny interesting i guess that with both of those things the train derailment and earthquakes in syria or not syria uh, turkey syria too anyway sorry but both of those things are bug out situations both so those those things are kind of looming in my mind just realizing we need to focus a lot more on the bug out stuff again yeah making sure our gear is good to go and make mm -hmm. sure we know how to use all of it i mean yeah um just like we have bucket toilets mm -hmm. but you know yeah we didn't have the stuff set up to use them yeah um that's one of those things where it's like, you don't just do that for fun, but. Yeah. <laughs> it's like training. What was I mean, that? I... It's not like super gross. Like now I feel like I want to ask anybody who's even still watching, would, would that be absolutely disgusting if we decided to like take a weekend and try to try to live without water for like two days? Like, would you guys be interested in seeing that because <laughs> like, now I'm like I'll do it shoot we'll do it for the videos I and try to get it all set up and figure out because yeah it. it's like you you have to be able to know yeah you have to know how to do it I don't know but yeah with the bug out stuff <clears throat> um between you know you you were just talking about how it's, t it's basically time for the yearly check yep to check all the gear the bug out bags sit filled in their or in their uh, in their places where they live, and they don't get touched very often. If we're going on a road trip, I typically will throw them in the truck. Um, you know, you never know what's going to happen. Um, it's good to have our kids with us, um, but largely they don't get opened. So make sure that everything that is um, up to date, everything's still functional. Everything you know. Uh, stuff hasn't leaked or whatever. Uh, make sure the food in there hasn't expired. Yeah. See if I want to add anything else. Yeah. That I've thought about over the year. Um, we still need to do a video on our bug out bags because I did the. <clears throat> it was like the ultimate cheap bug out bags because I had to make four bags all at once, and because some of these kits that people put together and it's like. Two thousand dollars worth of bug out bag crap, and it's stuff you're never going to use, hopefully. Um, but like, if you have to bug out, you're like freaking Hilton of bugging out. It's like crazy the amount of money people spend on this stuff. So uh, my goal was to do it as cheap as I possibly could. Um, I did everything low budget. Um, I think the only thing I did that was spendy was. Um, I got good flashlights. Um, I think each kit has a Firebox Nano, though. Oh, this got added later. Yeah. Those are those are that was more me <laughs> than him, but I just thought you know I mean obviously ideally I don't know you could just make a fire on the ground but who knows there could be a situation you can't or you just need to make a tiny one or you yeah. know just boil some water quick or whatever so yeah we, I I did get Firebox Nanos thrown into the bags and then one of the bags has the G two. The firebox. Um, Currently, that's in the garage. <laughs> Why? I just saw it out there. Okay. All right. Well, we got to fix that. So yeah, we got to check those bug out bags. Apparently. So um, anyway, yeah. So um, I, I've been thinking a lot about that. Um, that it's time to to get back onto, um, you know, kid, getting those those flushed out um especially with the meal aspect of it um and so <clears throat> like i have this book which is actually really good um so i i can link it below 
Uh, but this has a lot of incredibly good ideas. Um, and that, that's one thing to, to think about for anybody who is interested in dehydrating or whatever, looking at backpacking stuff, backpacking meal ideas. That's where I've gotten so many of my like instant type meal, bug out meal ideas from. Um, and so it's not really about bugging out, but it's like kind of like different kind of bugging out or bugging out for a different reason. <laughs> backpacking, you know, and putting all that stuff together. So, um, this is actually really great. Um, there's a lot of good stuff in here that I want to, um, focus on actually getting some meals put together. Um, I struggle with these kinds of videos too, for anybody who's going to want those videos. I struggle with, um, making content based on somebody else's content. So like if I'm putting together her recipes, how do I make a video out of that? Like I, I, I struggle with that a little bit. So <clears throat> Hopefully I can kind of figure that out. Um, but then with the first aid kit type stuff, um, do you want to talk about this? Or do you want me to talk about it? Um, you can talk about it. Oh, okay. I just... I haven't looked at it much. Did you... But do you agree that it seems really good? Yeah. He, he has looked at it a little bit. So this is a, a book, a relatively recent book I've gotten... I want to do a full review as soon as I finish reading the whole thing. Um, but this book, because you guys know I'm really into herbalism, but it's not just about herbalism. It's this guy was trained in um, austere medicine. So he was basically the guy doing battlefield medicine um, for his unit wherever he was. And so I can link this down below too. But there is, and just, just it's, it's so thorough. It might be the best first aid type thing that I have ever seen. I, I, I'm completely astounded. Um, simple splints, like the whole book is full of all kinds of like first aid type emergency medical care stuff. So figuring out some stuff to throw into our kits via that book, I think would be, you know, really smart. <laughs> so yeah. Yep. So yeah. Kind of getting the bug out stuff more dialed in again. Um, it's difficult. Oh yeah, and oh sorry, you were about to. Oh yeah, I was just thinking those those people in Ohio, they had to leave immediately. Yeah. So they got evacuated. I mean that's you have a train spilling chemicals in your backyard. It's go time. So either you can leave with nothing or run out the door and grab your bag. But yeah, thank God again that it was just a tiny community. Can you imagine if something like that happened here? I. Yeah, I mean, we've got train tracks that run all over the valley. I mean, it, yeah, any one of those could be carrying something that's, um, actually we had a, a train, a train fire. Um, yeah, a train derailed. Um, it was over, it was near, what is it, Tempe? Yeah, I think it was over there. Um, so yeah, that, that train yeah, yeah. caught fire and the train track burned and, um, it was a pretty big deal. It was, yeah, it was a few years ago. I remember seeing that on the news. Yeah. Um, crazy. Yeah. And that's, that's, <laughs> that's difficult for a lot of reasons. Cause I mean, not only do those trains potentially carry, um, hazardous materials, but they also carry food. Well, they carry your stuff. Right. And then you see like the plight of the railroad workers and you're like, Oh yeah, these trains are running with like one guy. You know, it's just like, unreal. <sighs> it's like, let me, let's take a break for a second so that I can stop freaking out and come back. Okay. <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> it's a lot to think about. A billion pounds of train. Some dude up front. He's been working since Christmas with no day off, you know, like, oh my gosh, those poor, poor railroad workers. I, <sighs> yeah. Anyway. I don't know. Definitely should support the people that support us. I for don't, real. I don't try to jump on the side of anything very frequently, but, um, I take care of some people. We take, take care of the people <laughs> that take care of us. Take so. care of the most important people. How about instead of funneling billions of dollars into the Super Bowl, we should funnel <laughs> money into the things that actually make our society work. Oh my gosh. Let's make sure those truck drivers can keep rolling and trains keep trucking along. For real. Farmers can keep farming and yeah, yeah. I, Keep the food flowing. Oh, anyway, but yeah, that that makes too much sense. <laughs> it's boring. Boring. Okay, just give give me one second. 
All right, so I guess we can wrap it up pretty soon. Um, I have, I guess we have like a mini haul. So today, it's not Valentine's Day today, but today was the day that Adam got to take off work and hang out. And so we went to a local vegan place. And um, then afterwards I was like, oh, I've never been to that Goodwill. <laughs> can we go to that Goodwill? And he was like, yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. That's well, it's what I asked for, okay? I understand that that doesn't sound very romantic or whatever, but it is what I asked for. So, anyway, you found these shoes for Sage, which I think are hilarious. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I was laughing so hard seeing him walk up with these. Yeah, it's those, those those sequins that like the up and down. So, anyway, so he got those for Sage. I'm gonna toss these into the wash. Um, and then I, I do that all the time. Actually, I wash shoes and then, um, just lay them, lay them out to dry. Like they don't go through the dryer. And so, yeah, it usually cleans them up and they look completely brand new, like even the rubber and stuff. So that's what I'm planning on doing with those. And then I got a few kitchen things. Um, I love shopping secondhand. I think it's really important. Again, I guess we talk about, you know, sustainability a lot on the channel and I, I think, buying things secondhand and focusing on sustainability is important from a prepping standpoint because you're trying to make things last as long as possible, you know? Yep. Like, it makes so much sense. <laughs> it's less demand on the system to produce a new thing. Yeah. But, yeah, and again, it's like, it's just the way that people used to live. They'd make stuff work. They did hand-me-downs. And... and bricks you can turn into something else. Yeah. Or, like, we were kind of talking about when... People like lived closer to the earth, even if it was just like a little cabin in the woods or whatever, you know, you carve a bowl, you carve a spoon, stuff wears out. When it wears out, you toss it outside, it goes back into the forest, you make a new thing, you, you know, people used to live a lot more sustainably in general. Um, I don't know how much of that is possible anymore for us, um, but you know kind of my idealized version of that life. Obviously, it's a very difficult life, so I'm not trying to say that. Anyway, regardless, I like to shop for things secondhand, and I, I tend to have in my head always, Adam's like, well, what are you looking for? <laughs> like, I don't know. When I see it, I'll know that that's something that I want, you know, because <laughs> I, I have like a running list in my head. But yeah, I, I like to not buy stuff new if possible. So like one of my favorite things that I grabbed today that I've been wanting is a rattan proofing basket for making sourdough. So yay, I got that. So apparently they're really easy to sterilize with like water and vinegar. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. But the next time I make a sourdough, I might be able to get like those lines in it. <laughs> make it look really cool. Um, I got these two really precious wooden bowls. These are more for aesthetic reasons for like cooking on YouTube and stuff. Um, like to have my measurements pre-measured in little bowls that like look like that right like I have so much love for these but especially these look at that you can see through that one it's so amazing the wood is really thin right here uh but anyway this they're marked on the bottom C Clinkenbeard I think both of them say C Clinkenbeard and they got donated this one looks like it's from 1998 this one's from 2003 um and this one is made of pistachio wood. And this one, what was this one? Sycamore. Made of sycamore. So yeah, I don't know. I just, I'm ridiculously in love with them. But yeah, I, I have them now. And Mr. Clink and Beard, you've got your bowls. I don't know. It's just pretty cool. So anyway, um, they're handmade, obviously. And I, I just treasure those. I treasure things like that. And yeah, so for my outdoor cooking, it can look super aesthetic. I think I've, I've talked about that a lot already on the channel. Like I've gotten things and I've talked about like doing cooking stuff in the future. Um, and so, yeah, it's like so many of the nice things in my kitchen. Like I look like I have a lot of really nice name brand things. I've got so many of them used <laughs> like at Goodwill uh, just because I keep my eye open. I've been wanting another pizza stone. So I got a pizza stone. It's got shoe marks on it. <laughs> So I'm just going to clean that. I think a good scrub, you're typically not supposed to do soap on a stone, but I'm going to go ahead and do soap on this. And then probably some oil will just take that right off. Uh, but yeah, this is a Pampered Chef 
pizza stone I got for like $9.50, so it's not super cheap, but brand new ones are like $50, so, yep. And also, yeah, it's better to get them secondhand. I, I like getting things secondhand, but yeah, that's what I grabbed at my Goodwill, Goodwill haul. I don't I know. pretty much look for kids' shoes and tools at Goodwill. Yeah. I'm always hoping to find something that somebody doesn't know is good. Yeah. And they've given it to Goodwill. Right. Um, We've gotten a couple of decent things. Or the um, thrift store in general, yeah. Yeah. I'm waiting for that moment where I find the thing like, oh yeah, this is $100 and it's being sold for a buck. Well, you know? That happens to me all the time though too. And so much of what I have, like I said, it's like a super nice thing, but people just like, I don't know if they don't know or they don't care. Or Like I found that one pot that we have that's like a $250 um, copper pot. It's tiny. It's like the tiniest pot that I own. But as soon as I, you pick it up and it, it weighs about 10 times as much as you think it, it's solid. it is so heavy. And I looked it up. It's like some French cookware brand. Somebody donated it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like copper and stuff. Um, and yeah, it's super crazy fancy. And the even the price on the pot was $6. Um, but it wouldn't scan and the the lady doing it she's like oh it's fine and she just gave it to me for 99 cents <laughs> it was like okay so i'm always like that's i think my favorite find ever and i'm always scanning those shelves for like matching copper cookware but anyway um we do need to go pretty soon to pick up sage but i do want to do a little mail call is that okay because i want to acknowledge the people that send me things. Um, and so I've gotten three packages in the mail. Two of them were from over the holidays. And I do apologize if you send me something in the post office box and I don't respond or you don't see it very quickly. Um, a lot of times I don't check my post office box for like a really long time. It's just not something that I, I look at. Um, and so that's what kind of happened with these. They were sitting for a really long time before... I realized that I had anything there. So we're making a habit now of trying to check it every weekend. Um, but basically I got a really cute little card from a subscriber named Susan. Thank you for the card. I thought it was super sweet of her. Um, <clears throat> she said, I enjoy your YouTube channel. I comment all the time. Keep up the good work. Your friend from Mississippi, Susan. So thank you so much for sending a card. I really appreciate that. Um, like our original subscriber, <laughs> I call her the original, even though I don't know. We might, we had some others too, but, um, it was Kathy F is the one that has been commenting. She's been commenting on my videos since back when my videos only get like three views. <laughs> one of them was me and one of them was Kathy. And so <laughs> I don't know who that third person was, but, um, <clears throat> she commented all the time, the most lovely comments. Anyway, she cut these amazing paper bags these paper bag stars um and sent um like a, a line so basically it goes through to hang up i'm gonna hang these up in my house somewhere i don't know where i actually can't see is it on the mm -hmm. it's like fully blocking my head i can't see <laughs> um so i just that i squeed so loud like i i was jumping up and down and i'm obsessed with these they're like they tick all my boxes i love the i love handmade things i love you know low waste things and yeah i just this makes me so happy so thank you so much kathy that is incredible i love them i treasure them thank you i treasure you you are amazing you she's just like she's been around for so long so supportive and so lovely and I'm going to start crying because, yeah, I love Kathy. Um, all right. Squee. <laughs> and then also from Susie, I believe. So we have one from Susan and one from, oh, another Susan. But I'm pretty sure you go, don't you go by Susie? Let me know in the comments down below. Oh, yeah, it is Susie. Um, and so uh, she just sent some pot holders. It's like super cute. She made some cotton pot holders and it's funny i was just recently thinking i need to get some more of these uh you would not believe it or maybe you would believe it you would know living here in central arizona that like pot holders can be like a prep 
<laughs> having stuff on hand that can hold hot things is like really important. So, yes. Put a couple in the car for the steering wheel. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> it's like, uh, it's like there's this part of the year where you're driving and you're driving like this. See, stop moving here. Stop it's it. It's terrible. Don't move here. <laughs> so, it's the worst. Uh, but yeah, I, I just, I'm, I'm so grateful. Thank you so much for sending these. And I do genuinely appreciate I appreciate all of, I appreciate all of I appreciate all of you. I meant to do like a big Christmas thing. Although this was not Christmas. This was just just random sweetness. Um and so yeah, I meant to do a big Christmas thing and like say thank you for my cards and stuff. We just we haven't filmed. Yep. But yeah, so thank you for that. And I mean, I guess we got to we got to head out. So Thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. Um, hopefully you enjoyed that. Sorry that I was freaking out and stressed a little bit in this one. I try not to be. Um, I don't know. It happens to me too. But yeah, that's why we prep. Yep. To try to lessen those feelings. So anyway. All right. Do you have anything? Bye. <laughs> okay. As always, I hope the rest of your day is good. And your life stays wonderful. Thank you so much for watching. See you guys next time. Bye.